Welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to be looking at the Sovo SV06 Ace. Sovo sent me the machine and over the last week or so I've been printing multiple things to see how it works. So keep watching and I'll go over how it performs and what it has to offer. The machine is packaged very compact and only it requires minor assembly. The instructions are pretty straightforward. Just looking at the pictures convey most of the information you need. The Solvo SV06 Ace has a print volume of 220 by 220 millimeters on the X and Y axis and 250 millimeters on the Z. The machine launched November 7th for an early word price of $259 US for the first 500 units. After that, the price increases to $299 US. Solvo also told me the machine has been completely open sourced and I'll leave a link in the uh, description to the GitHub if you're interested. Here's everything that comes in the box. I'll quickly run through the assembly process. The first step is attaching the upright gantry to the base. It slots into two channels on the base and then gets bolted together. The main cabling for the bed and hot end are already attached, so you just need to make sure you unwind it properly. Uh, the main board then clips on to two posts on the upright bar. On the cable running to the hot end is a built-in camera module. This just clips onto the horizontal gantry. Then the hot end gets bolted onto the mounting plate on the gantry with three bolts from behind. Again, make sure the cable uh, running to the hot end isn't twisted and loops naturally before uh, bolting it on. The touchscreen just plugs into the ribbon cable and then slots onto the base. The power supply gets bolted onto the other upright post. And then the last piece to attach is the spool holder and the runout sensor. With that all done, there's just a few cables that need to be plugged into uh, some of the stepper motors and the power supply, and then everything's assembled. After booting up, you'll be asked to set up the Wi-Fi, and then the machine will go through a calibration process. I want to point out this foam block at the front of the printer, and there's another one behind it uh, underneath the print bed. Uh, there's no mention in the manual to remove them, and they blend in so well with the machine, I didn't notice they were there until I noticed the bed wasn't moving the full distance during the calibration. I mentioned this to Sovol, and they said that they were going to add some kind of labeling or uh, make it obvious that these things need to be removed, but just in case, uh, keep an eye out for this. Once the calibration was done, there was a firmware update that required the calibration to be run again, so I removed the foam blocks and let it run through. Before I start printing, I want to mention a few of the features on the machine. The hot end and bed both run on these steel rods with uh, grooved steel wheels. This is the same setup my lasers had, and I've been running it for over a year with zero maintenance, so I'm pretty excited that the machine uses this setup. Both sides of the gantry have steel rods, lead screws, and stepper motors. Also, both axes have uh, belt tightening knobs to make it easy to adjust the belt tension, and the hot end has a quite large cooling fan. The fan will be needed to cool things down at the 600 millimeters per second they say that the machine can run at. The machine is also running clipper and has fully automatic bed leveling. Something else I found interesting is uh, at the back of the bed there's this little silicone brush that's used to clean the nozzle before printing. Now it's time to load some filament. I'm starting with some yellow Sunlu high speed PLA. The loading process is pretty simple. The menu gives you two options. PLA and ABS slash other. The options just set the temperature of the hot end. PLA is at 220 degrees and ABS is around 260. After picking your filament type, you just need to select load and the machine will heat the hot end. Then it'll ask you to make sure you've loaded the filament into the extruder and then it'll feed it through. Before running the first print, I wiped down the uh, build plate with isopropyl alcohol just to make sure it was clean and there was no oils or dirts uh, on the surface that would cause uh, adhesion problems. On the included USB drive, there's a 13 minute benchy, so we'll try that as the first print. I'd say this benchy is pretty decent. The bottom of the bow has a bit of a irregularity in it, 
and there's this hanging bit of extrusion on the top, but otherwise it's pretty solid. Now let's try slicing some prints to test. On the USB is included a copy of Orca Slicer, along with the instructions how to use it, which is nice so you don't have to go out and download it. If you already have Orca Slicer, you just have to make sure you have the latest version. If you already have Orca Slicer installed, there's a PDF explaining how to copy over just the ACES profile. This also comes with two filament profiles for PLA and TPU, and then a generic one for PETG. If you like using your phone to uh, monitor your prints, you can also install the Obico app, and then in the manual it walks you through how to set up the printer on it. But because the printer is running Clipper, uh, you can just put the machine's IP address into your browser, and you can monitor it through there if you like. Um, you can also um, set up the webcam to record time lapses. All the prints for the test have been sliced at 0.2 millimeter layer heights. Uh, the first one will start with a calibration cube. The print quality had no issues, and the dimensions were all only a few hundredths off, which will be perfect for most cases and you could adjust if needed. Next was an overhang test. This was the only print I had failed because the uh, nozzle hit the print and knocked it free of the build plate. Uh, I think one of the arms must have lifted during the printing, and that's what caused the collision. After adding some glue stick to the bed and adding a brim, I tried again, uh, and there was a collision, but this time it just broke the arm off the print and completed the rest. As for the overhangs themselves, uh, they did pretty well, right up to the very end. Then I tried a tolerance test. Uh, everything printed perfect, all the pieces move freely. And now for something really difficult is this torture cube that's made up of a bunch of small little bars, almost like a cage. This causes the printer to make a bunch of moves and a bunch of retractions. That's what causes uh, most of the stringing you see. But besides the stringing, it uh, printed perfect and that's uh, pretty easy to clean up with a heat gun. Next I wanted to try something a little bit bigger, so I tried this uh, wavy vase printed in vase mode. Again, this printed perfect, I don't see any issues with it. Now for a few character models. Uh, first I'll print this white stormtrooper in white sunlu filament. The supports came off pretty easy, but I think the profile could be tweaked a little bit to make the separation uh, even better. But besides that, uh, the print came out great with uh, high quality in the details. I also printed a Gandalf model and a Flexirex in marble PLA from Hello3D and both printed without issue. I tried printing some other Flexi Rexes in a few different uh, pet Gs. Uh, they were okay, but the, there seemed to be a bit of a under extruding issue. So I think uh, this profile needs to be tweaked a little. I wanted to try printing something bigger that would take a while. So I found this Duke Nukem mo model and I scaled it up to max out the vertical height. Uh, it took about nine hours to print. And besides uh, the support sticking a little more than they should, uh, there was no issues. I think uh, this marble PLA um, would need the profile adjusted a bit for the supports. For another large print, I found uh, this bottom of a Roman pillar that's meant to be used as a flower pot. So I scaled it up a bit to accept a four inch flower pot. Lastly, I wanted to try some TPU since there was already a profile for it and it's one of the harder materials to print with. I found this honeycomb ball model, which I knew would be very difficult to print, but it handled it extremely well. Uh, there was quite a bit of stringing on the inside, but TPU is known to string anyway, uh, but most of it was uh, removed just with a heat gun. The actual print itself came out great. I also tried printing just normal spheres, um, one with some infill and one with none, and they both printed fine. I then printed this model of Grogu that I had. I printed it before on other machines in TPU, so I know it should work, and it came out great on this also. There was a bit of issues with the supports sticking in some spots, but that could be uh, easily cleaned up. So what are my final thoughts? Well, first off, if you got this far, you're amazing. And as far as the printer's concerned, I think it's pretty amazing also. If you're looking for a printer at a budget price, but premium quality, I think the Sovo SV06 Ace is a strong buy. I can't really speak to long-term reliability because I've only had it for a little while, but based on the build quality, I don't think there's going to be any issues. 
leave a comment below and let me know what you think of the machine. If there's anything I haven't covered or you have any questions, I'll try to answer everything I can. Uh, start your comment with the word ace, so I know you got this far. If you like what you see and uh, you're considering picking one up for yourself, there's a referral link in the description that uh, I'll get a small commission at no cost to you and that really helps out the channel. Uh, while you're there, feel free to hit that like button if you uh, got any value out of this video. Thanks for watching.